Hey guys, I'm Ozia and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be looking at the Bedrock Breaker. Um, so we can get ourselves some, uh, well, essentially Bedrock. Uh, so we can make Bedrock gears, tools, and uh, other stuff that requires Bedrock. So uh, first of all, we're going to make the Bedrock Breaker. It's fairly easy. Um, so you need uh, three obsidian, two diamonds, one steel ingot, and three base panels. Um, I have got a video on how to make obsidian with the Obsidian Factory from Rotary Craft which can make uh, obsidian at hilarious speeds um, but let's get on to it anyway so you need the work table it's pretty easy just uh, three down the side three base panels on the other side stealing it in the center and two diamonds and you get uh, yourself a bedrock breaker okay um, you're also going to need um, some kind of uh, way to pick up the bedrock after it's harvested. This doesn't auto automatically pick it up that I know of. Maybe maybe I've missed something. Um, but if you've got yourself a vacuum hopper from open blocks and a chest, you can automatically pick up the item or you can use a, an item vacuum from Rotary Craft. They can do it as well, but we're going to use the vacuum hopper since I've already got one made. You're also going to need some bevel gears too because uh, this has to face towards the the bedrock and if you're a monster it's likely that the bedrock is uh is flat um uh, so all the way down here Whoop. i'm gonna make myself sick okay so um you do need uh two million watts of power which is exactly what we've got from our little remote steam turbine setup here um you will need eight thousand newton meters of torque so we're gonna to need to upscale this uh, by eight. So you're gonna need at least a eight eight to one diamond gearbox. Uh, anything else should will probably break, I believe. Um, so let's just break that one off. Uh, let's get our get rid of our borer machine. It's been going quite well. Okay, then put our diamond gear in. Make sure it's not facing this way. Uh, you do it this way so that it fills up with lubricant before the power actually goes through it. So then you can just turn around. So it's in torque mode. So this should be roughly be 8,000 torque at the moment. And then what you need to do is you need to get uh, the bevel out. Actually, I've already got a chest item here. Uh, do I want to use it or not? Uh, I won't use it. Um, so we need to get this. Uh, if you can see on the, um, I'll just place it down the side. You need you need to get this face here to actually face the uh, the bedrock. So put down a gear and the output. Let's see, is it different? Nope. Uh, where's my angular transducer? Where is it? Oh, yeah, I'm looking at it. Okay, so what's that? Yellow is out. Okay, we want the opposite of yellow for input. Black, yep, there we go. And we need, I think, there we go, top. And then one more bevel gear. Hopefully the output's the right side, input side. Yep, that's right, that's spinning. And then, okay, how do we do this one again? The, the opposite of yellow should be the input, and blue should be output. No, nope, wrong direction, there we go. Now we've got the power basically going up and then down. We can then put the bedrock breaker in there. And then we've got to rotate it so the green is facing up. As you can see, it's starting to, to work. And basically, if you just put the minimum amount of power in, it's gonna take a long time to get through just one stage of the process okay so it doesn't take 17 or well, 18 seconds in this case to break a block it actually takes a like a 18 seconds just to um, shave a bit off the block uh, the, off the block so it'll actually take longer than 18 seconds much longer so as you can see you can see now it actually cuts a little bit into the bedrock but once um, that gets down to getting through the whole bedrock, it will then drop um, a piece or two of um, the bedrock. So that's why we've brought the vacuum hopper, so we can automatically pick it up. Let's 
Let's go put there. And then there. I could have done it into this chest and have it automatically, you know, pop off back to the base, but um I actually wanna see oh I need to make any eye disappear a bit. Okay, so this side needs that put on, yep. Okay, so when it drops we got something I can just drop in there for a second. When it drops, the vacuum pump will pick it up and end up in the chest. So all we're gonna do now is wait. So I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna wait, and then I'm going to speed up the recording. Okay guys, I'm back and I think it has gone through one bedrock. It does actually make a noise every once in a while. And I think when it does make the noise, it does actually uh, break a piece. Now, um, in between now and then, I've actually done a little bit of testing as to how this thing actually drops the item. And I've come to the conclusion that previous testing I failed and it doesn't actually drop the item, but it does, well, it does, but it doesn't do it automatically. You've got to right click on it to automatically do it. So, I thought if we get an autonomous activator, now hopefully, if it's already gone through a piece, it should have some bedrock dust inside of it, so, yep, there we go, the autonomous activator automatically clicked on it, and we've got it, now if I wasn't standing so close to this vacuum, I would have picked it up, now, once it's broken through those, those bits, um, it will continue on going through the bedrock until, I think, I think it has a range of about five blocks ahead of it, now, um, it won't go through level zero, a bedrock, uh, let's just check that again, should be level zero. Yeah, the bedrock at layer zero. So it'll keep on going until it gets there. Um, <clears throat> so once it's done that, um, what you want to do is you want to change these bevels around so you actually face the uh, bedrock so it starts cutting along this path. And uh, once it's gotten through to about, you know, here, and it's run out of range, you'll have to move the bedrock again. So, um, I haven't actually got any on me at the moment, but I've got one over here somewhere. Yeah, it's not being used at all, is it? So, I should really use the tool for that. There you go. So, if, um, if you don't want to waste diamonds using diamond shafts, because uh, this thing does use up uh, 8,000 newton meters of torque, which will snap most shafts, um, if you use a clutch, uh, the clutches essentially handle infinite amounts of uh, uh, radian speed and torque. Um, you will need to put a, a lever on them to get them to work. But essentially, they're a sort of a sort of a cheaty way of um, uh, sending power without actually having to make diamond components or bedrock components so yeah and I think that's that's that yeah it looks like it's gone through I can't really tell because I can't really break that block so it does look like it's going on to the next one that looks like one yep so it does take some time obviously if you want to go faster you have to increase the uh, the speed which it goes at um, obviously I've only got enough I've only got enough torque here to run it at its minimum but if you had something like a jet engine 67 million watts you could probably get it to run a little bit faster but uh, you're probably not going to be needing that much bedrock um, so it's all right if it goes slow just set up like an autonomous activator to right click it every once in a while to to pull uh, the bedrock dust that's collected and just use a vacuum hopper or something like that to to collect it or you know to send it into a test rack for the to get to an AE system or something like that, yeah. So um, that's about it for today's lesson. Um, why did I call it a lesson? It's not a lesson. I'm not a teacher. Hmm. I'm a Gumby. Anyway, that's about it for the end of today's episode. If you've got any uh, questions, let me know. Uh, comments, put them down below. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe because it, it really does help me. So uh, until next time, guys.